Hello and welcome to the third organ mini concert since this summer. The program that you are about to hear will be a little bit different from our past programs. I have invited our church chef, Elizabeth Ferguson, uh, to help take us on a journey through three different countries. Our mode of transportation, you might ask, uh, will be desserts and music from some Baroque masters. The program will consist of three segments that will be uh, the actual making of the dessert, and then there will be a little video about the music you are about to hear, followed by the music that I will be playing on the organ while you enjoy your dessert. You can find the recipes to the desserts uh, in this past Sunday's worship folder and tapestry. Now, let's get ready to enjoy the sweet sounds of the organ as we journey from the Baroque to the delicious. Good evening, Wilshire. Welcome to the commercial kitchen that you can find in our church underneath the main sanctuary. Tonight we're going to be making three desserts and Jeff invited me to help him with his organ recital tonight. So we decided to make a dessert from each of the countries of the songs that he'll be playing for us. We're starting right now with a flourless chocolate cake. Now I always thought flourless chocolate cake came from France, but it turns out it's Italian. And it's actually a very, very simple recipe. Uh, there's only a couple of steps to follow, and I'm gonna jump right in and we will get it started for you. What we're doing is we have a cup and a half of unsalted butter and a cup and a half of our chocolate. I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap, put it in the microwave. Now it's very important when you're melting chocolate that you have to do it carefully because chocolate will go from hot to burnt in a flash. I think the easiest way to do it is on a setting of defrost. So what I did when I was making this recipe at home is I put the chocolate in the microwave, I put it on defrost, and I melted it for about three and a half minutes, took it out, stirred it, another three and a half minutes, so seven minutes total on defrost, and it was purely melted, smooth, and ready to go. This is what you're going to end up with. So you take a whisk, stir it all together, no lumps, very creamy and delicious. Now we have to let that cool before we can mix it with the rest of the ingredients. So while that's cooling, we're going to mix together most of our dry ingredients. We're gonna start with uh, one cup plus two tablespoons of sugar. We're gonna do half a teaspoon of salt. And I just wanted to show you, I have my special Valentine's heart-shaped measuring spoons today, but they're exactly the same as any other measuring spoon. So round ones are good too. I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt, and I'm using iodized salt instead of kosher. If you use kosher salt, you're gonna to have to add about half as much more because the grains are so much larger. We're going to add two tablespoons of instant coffee. Sprinkle it on top. Some vanilla extract. So, I'm gonna take my spatula and just mix that up. It's not gonna mix very well because it's some dry, some wet. It's okay if it's lumpy, not a problem. Our chocolate has been cooling for a while. So I'm gonna scrape a chocolate in on top. Spatula to make sure we get every little delicious bit into our bowl. And whisk that until it's all mixed up. Now, it's gonna look grainy. That is perfectly okay. All that means is that the chocolate, while it's melted, it's not hot enough to actually melt the sugar. But that's gonna happen in the oven, so we're good to go. Now, we're gonna add five large eggs. If you put cold eggs into warm ingredients, sometimes it affects the way that the ingredients mix together. So we're gonna pour the eggs into our chocolate mixture and whoops, slop some over the edge and whisk that very, 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 very well. You don't want to see any streaks of eggs. This can be done in a stand mixer or with a hand mixer if you like. I'm just kind of old fashioned and like to do things by hand. 
All right, so the eggs are completely incorporated. Our last ingredient is Dutch processed cocoa. We need three quarters of a cup. So I'm going to gently whisk my cocoa in. Since my eggs are already incorporated, I don't want to whisk it too much because then it is possible to overmix. We want it just mixed together. You can see there's a few lumpy looking pieces of cocoa in there. I'm not worried about them. They will incorporate into our mixture. All right. Line the bottom with parchment paper, nonstick spray. Spray the sides and the bottom. Put your parchment in, spray the parchment. And then give our, our batter one last little whisk. Knock all the batter off the whisk and scrape that into our prepared pan. And again, always use a spatula. You don't want to lose any little bit of goodness. So we have our oven preheated to 350 degrees. This is going to go into the oven. And depending upon which size pan you use, it may take shorter or longer than the time that's listed on the recipe. And that is our flourless chocolate cake. I'm so glad you joined us. Now enjoy Jeff's next piece of music. Buongiorno, and welcome to Italy. Perhaps the best well-known composer of the Italian Baroque would be Antonio Vivaldi. Vivaldi was known as the Red Priest because of his red hair. Uh, he was a music director at the court in Mantua in northwestern Italy, and part of his responsibilities was to direct the all-girls orchestra. That is to say, he was a music teacher as well as a composer. Vivaldi's set of four concerti, known as the Four Seasons, uh, depict characteristics of the seasons of the year. In the concerto titled Spring, we will hear birds singing, and of course, we're in Texas, and we know as well as anybody else, what would spring be like without a good healthy dose of thunderstorms. That's right, we will be hearing thunder and lightning in this concerto. So I would ask that you be listening for these special musical effects as we listen to Vivaldi.
Welcome back to the kitchen. We're headed now over to France. What we're making today is a sauce, but it's not just a sauce. It has so many possibilities. You're going to love it. It is called a coulis. It's spelled C-O-U-L-I-S, and it looks like coulis, but we have to pronounce it the French way instead of using our Texas accents. What a coulis is, is simply a pureed sauce, usually of fruit or vegetables. And it's often strained so that it's very, very smooth. It's used as a garnish or as an ingredient to make a different kind of sauce or as a seasoning for just about any kind of food. The coulis we're making today is raspberry. And it's going to be a sweet sauce, but you'll have opportunities to use it in savory ways as well. This is a super easy one. It only has a handful of ingredients, and it's going to go very quickly. What we start out by doing is we take half a cup of granulated sugar and two tablespoons of water. Room temperature, it can be warm. You just want, don't want super cold icy water. You're going to put two tablespoons in there. You can shake it up a little bit if you want. Don't even have to stir it. We're going to take this and we're going to put it in the microwave. You want to microwave it for one minute. Take it out. Give the dish a swirl a little bit. And after about 30 more seconds, it's going to start bubbling. You don't want it to bubble over, so make sure that you use a dish that's large enough that it's not going to spill over the sides. Once it's bubbling, take it out of the microwave after that second 30 seconds, and it should be completely smooth. When, you when you're pulling it out of the microwave, you stir it up. There might be residual bubbles, but you don't want there to be any grains of sugar. So once you have your sugar heated up and completely smooth, Add in two tablespoons of orange juice concentrate, straight out of the can. You don't have to do anything to it. Now, this one is thawed because I'm using it for another recipe as well. If it's frozen, that's not a problem at all. Scrape my extra concentrate on, stir it up. That's good enough because it's going to go in our mixer. I have a 12-ounce bag of frozen raspberries. I did let them sit out for a couple of hours so they're thawed. There's maybe a couple of ice crystals, and they still feel cool, but they're not frozen at all. Dump that in. I'm going to add my orange juice and my sugar. And I'm going to pulse, which is turn on and off. On, off, on. It doesn't take much, but I always like to stop at least once and scrape the sides to make sure that no big chunks got stuck on them. Our last ingredient is some vanilla. And if you want, you can process it again. Or you could have you just used your spatula to stir it. Either way. This is our sauce. But we have a few more steps until it's ready to go. I'm going to pour all of my coulis or my raspberry puree into my strainer, scraping the sides to get all the yummy. And then I'm going to use my spatula, and I'm just going to press it against the bottom of the sieve. And what's coming out is just the raspberry without the seeds. Some, you can leave the seeds in if you like, if you like that little bit of crunch. I kind of do, but for this application, we're going to take them out. All right, so pretty much all of my raspberry, the smooth parts in the bowl, the seedy parts in the top, and that is my sauce. Now you can see it's pretty, pretty fluid-like because it's still a little bit warm from the sugar syrup. This is the sauce that has been refrigerated overnight. And so it's thickened just a little bit, but not a whole lot. Don't expect it to be really thick because it is so delicious and the raspberry flavor is so pure that you don't want something that completely coats what you're putting it on. Now that we have our raspberry sauce, um, we need to explore the different things that we can do with it. We can put it on top of ice cream. We could serve it on that fabulous flourless chocolate cake we just made. We could mix it in with some savory ingredients and use it as a sauce for meat, even. 
It could be the base for a raspberry salad dressing. The possibilities are endless. So use your creativity, mix something up, see what you come up with, and then let me know. I look forward to hearing how you end up using your coolie. Bonjour, and welcome to France. The organ scene of France was very busy during the Baroque era, and many pieces of the French Baroque used some sound effects, like animal sounds, or once they would uh, take a plank of wood, put it on the low pedals, pull out the stops, and then stomp on the wood to create the effect of thunder. I don't think I'll be doing that for you today. But the piece that you will hear, La Cuckoo, uh, uses the sounds of the cuckoo bird. Did you know the cuckoo bird sings only two notes? And you've heard this song before if you have a cuckoo clock on your wall. Uh, the composer of this piece, Louis-Claude Decan, was very well known uh, for composing variations on melodies. But on this piece, La Cuckoo, he wrote a whole three minute set of variations on just two notes. As I play this on the Wilshire organ, I want you to listen to all the beautiful flute sounds that I try to use to show the different ways that the bird can sing.
our final recipe, we're going to go to the northern part of the EU to the Netherlands. This is a cookie that's often served in coffee shops. And in fact, it's called a chatterbox cookie because usually people are talking and laughing and joking while they're eating it. So we're going to make some Kletschstoppen cookies, chatterbox cookies. It's a very simple recipe. It goes together very quickly. We start out with one cup of light brown sugar, one tablespoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of iodized salt. Again, we're using the fine ground salt as opposed to kosher because we want it to blend very evenly into our recipe. And we're going to add in a quarter cup of warm water. Now, this is going to melt together and mix a little bit, but it's not going to be super duper smooth right at the beginning because the sugar's not going to melt all the way. It will be a little bit granular for this recipe. I already had melted some butter, and we're going to add the butter in, and the warmth of the butter will help the brown sugar to continue melting, and it will start to look very soft. Our last two ingredients are two-thirds cup flour, and to measure my flour, I'm just doing a scoop, leveling it, and pouring it in. Two-thirds cup flour. Stir, stir, stir. And then one cup of chopped almonds. I put my almonds into my food processor and pulsed it a couple of times. So I have some pretty fine bits and some larger bits. You don't want any of the chunks to be any larger than a quarter of an inch, though. It's good to have little and big because it adds a nice texture to the cookies. So once that's all stirred together, it's sort of crumbly, but it's also sort of squishy. You want it to look uniform. And it's OK if it's kind of dry, because it will continue to mill together while it's in the refrigerator. So this is our batter. We're going to cover it with plastic wrap, pop it in the refrigerator, and we're going to leave it in the refrigerator for at least four hours. Now, I have some that I actually prepared yesterday. So this has been in the refrigerator overnight. And you can see what we ended up with is it all sticks together. It sort of feels like cement. It's very crumbly, and it's pretty sticky because of all the sugar. But that's exactly the texture we want it to be. This is approximately a two tablespoon size scoop. I'm going to scoop out rounds and scoop them on, put them onto a parchment-lined cookie sheet. So I have six on my baking sheet. And I'm going to use the palm of my hand, not my fingers the palm flat part of my hand, and I'm going to press those a quarter of an inch or so. Now, if you don't want to touch the dough, you can use the bottom of a measuring cup. You can use the bottom of a water glass. Just keep in mind that because it's so sticky, you might have to peel it off a little bit. If you have enough space in your oven, go ahead and do two pans, and you're going to bake them in the top third and the bottom third of your oven. If you only have enough space for one at a time, that's fine too. We're just going to do one. We're going to put this into a preheated 350 degree oven. We're going to set a timer and cook it for five minutes. After five minutes, we want to use a pot holders, take out the pan, turn it 180 degrees, and if you're using two shelves, make sure that you switch the top pan to the bottom shelf and the bottom pan to the top shelf. This just helps the cookies cook completely evenly because there's so much sugar in them, it's very easy for them to burn on one side if you don't turn them so that the sugar will cook evenly in your oven. These are my unbaked cookies, but I also have a pan of baked. And it's kind of funny because you can almost not tell the difference between them. These are a little bit darker, and these are not sticky, whereas those are still sticky. So once they're out of your oven, you can put them either on just a flat surface or on a rack, but leave them on the pan for at least five minutes, because right now they're super hot and they're really kind of still smooshy. 
after uh, the last organ piece, Jeff is going to join us down at Community Hall, and we're going to show you some presentation, and Jeff's going to taste all our delicious desserts. See you in just a few. Goedendag, and welcome to the Netherlands. Well, I have to admit that I might have fibbed a little bit on this one. You see, we will not be visiting Holland, but rather we're going to find ourselves in uh, central Germany, where we will be paying a visit to our dear friend, Herr Bach. So perhaps I should say, Guten Tag. Johann Sebastian Bach loved the music of all the lands of Europe and was known to imitate quite often uh, the music of France, Italy, and the Netherlands. Matter of fact, Bach's most favorite composer was Antonio Vivaldi, whom we heard just a little bit ago. Now Bach learned to play the organ and write for the organ in the style of the North German way, which was heavily influenced by the Netherlands. From that tradition comes to us this piece of music or style of playing called the Fantasia. The Fantasia, or fantasy, was to have five sections of music, and each of the sections were alternating in style. So there would be a sections uh, that would be calm and surreal, or measured and strict, and then the alternating section to that would be wild and dramatic. Uh, the rule was that this fantasy style, or stilus fantasticus, would be played sometimes fast, sometimes slow, sometimes with one note, sometimes with two notes, sometimes with many notes. So, I'm going to let you decide which way that Herr Bach liked to play the fantasia.
hello and welcome to the community hall. Uh, I guess I'm going to be Elizabeth's guinea pig and try some of these wonderful uh, desserts that she has prepared. So Elizabeth, where shall we start? Let's start with our Italian flourless chocolate cake. Ooh, I want to show you how I've decided to serve this today. I made a vanilla sauce and some uh, macerated strawberries. So the vanilla sauce couldn't be any easier. I'm going to hand this over to you, Jeff, and just please help yourself. What I did was I took a box of instant vanilla pudding and I made it exactly according to the instructions, let it firm up for about an hour, scooped out half a cup, stirred in an extra fourth of a cup of milk, and that was my sauce. Give it a try. I do think that this cake tastes best if it's served at room temperature so that the chocolate has all of the flavors have the opportunity to come out. Mm. Mm. What That's do you very think? Good. I love that. I love the spearmint on that. It really just brings out kind of a, I don't know what the proper term for it is, but. Zing. Zing. How's that? Mm, I love it. That's good. It tastes the, very fresh. It's homegrown. I picked it from my garden this morning. Oh, wow. That's great. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. That is Our delicious. second dessert that we're going to go with is the raspberry coulis that we made. And today we're serving it on top of Tillamook vanilla ice cream. Tillamook ice cream. That's the best ice cream in the world. Why is it the best ice cream, Jeff? Well, Tillamook is a town in Oregon, and that's where my dad's family uh, is from. And they were dairy farmers for many years. Some of the family still are dairy farmers, and uh, they contribute mu uh, music. That's what I do. They contribute dairy uh, products to the co-op and the farm up there and produce wonderful cheese and ice cream. So yeah. this is, you know, I brought my spearmint. We're bringing your ice cream. And I love raspberry and I love raspberry and chocolate and I love ice cream and Tillamook ice cream. So this is wonderful. I'm not going to eat dinner tonight. I'm just going to eat this stuff. Pull and I did add a little bit of extra chop chocolate. What I took, did was I just took some of the extra chocolate chips I had from making our flourless chocolate cake, chopped them up, sprinkled on top. You could go super fancy and get a bar of chocolate and use a vegetable peeler to shave it into fancy curls. I just used what we had. I'm just going to get a second bite. Oh, please do. Mmm. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Well, that is delicious. It's not Thank too you. sweet, right? Mm, no. And this ice cream is really good because it's not overly sugary. Absolutely. It's more yes. creamy. And it has a very, very distinct vanilla flavor. Yes. Which makes and it wonderful. And it's my dad's favorite ice cream. So, and I know he's watching, so I guess this is the right way to do that. <laughs> <laughs> our uh, last dessert is our Kletschstappen cookies from the Netherlands. And um, as I mentioned before, these are traditionally served in coffee houses. So we have a cup of coffee, and um, I've seen them where a cookie is just on top of the cup, balanced. Our cookies are not quite big enough because I wanted to use our wonderful Wilshire coffee mugs. But um, you can, I've heard of some people crumbling them in or dipping or just having a sip and taking a bite. Try it however you'd like. Say the name of the cookie again. Kletschkoppen. Kletschkoppen is a uh, Dutch cookie. And I'm not familiar with this type of cookie, but uh, cookie is actually a Dutch word and it just means a little cake. And there's actually a culture uh, behind cookies in the Netherlands where it was kind of a gauge uh, to know if you were outstaying your welcome while visiting somebody's home. So if you had a large plate of cookies uh, and if the conversation was going well, the cookies would go slowly. But if the conversation was not going well, they'd go quickly and then the host would stand up and say it's time to leave. So the story in my family is when my father was a child, uh, he was warned before visiting his grandparents from the Netherlands, uh, who lived in Oregon, uh, that if you eat up all the cookies, they will make us leave. <laughs> and so that is a, a custom they brought with them, much like all of our wonderful um, foreigners that come and live here. Uh, they bring their customs and we get to partake in that. And so now I'm going to enjoy a wonderful Dutch cookie and coffee. Mmm. They are very sweet, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's an excellent foil to a rich cup of coffee. Mm. Oh yeah, it's great with the coffee. Oh my goodness, that is wonderful. I'm going to try it this way too. <clears throat> well, I look forward Delicious. to hearing about everybody's experiments with our recipes. And if you take pictures, 
please post them on maybe some of our social media. I'd love to see how things turn out. If you have any questions, you can always send me an email as well. Wonderful. Well, I'd like to thank you uh, for watching. Uh, special thanks to Chef Elizabeth and the man behind the camera uh, to help make all of this uh, wonderful desserts and the organ music, uh, which I'm about to go upstairs to record, uh, possible for you to enjoy. And don't worry, we're going to make sure that David has plenty of desserts. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat all this. So. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm.